Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. I thought I would mix this in while I'm still working on the last set of batches for the Cryptids and Monsters series. And then this one, on this particular entry, it has to do with a mobster that showcases the power within, let's say, certain parts of the Mafia organization, in particular, anything involving the world of construction. So if you've ever seen uh, all those Mafia movies, they barely highlight, for whatever reason, the far reach and how, uh, I guess, powerful they are within the construction industry, which in turn allows the Mafia lots and lots of money in terms of collection. And this gentleman here, the one I'm talking about, was one of the major players players within that type of extortion and it has to do with this this guy here he's Ralph Scopo but like most other mafia members he went by a nickname known as Little Ralphie so here's all the information associated with this Ralph Little Ralphie Scopo so who was this guy well, he was someone, and I mentioned was because he's already deceased, but he was someone who was a New York mobster ever since, I guess, a young age. Either way, um, his life, I guess, before he was involved in the mafia is pretty scarce, but eventually in his world, he became a major player within one of the major crime families, in this case, the Colombo crime family. Um, he was even someone that had other family members join the mafia world, for example, example, uh, there was the uh, sons of Joseph Scopo and Ralph Scopo Jr. And then also he was the grandfather of other mafia members, in this case Joseph Scopo Jr. and then Ralph Scopo III. So if you're keeping track, the family members, all of them pretty much were called either Joseph or Ralph, at least uh, re regarding this information. But when it came to his power uh, within the Colombo fi uh, crime family, he eventually became became someone that was tied to this organization, the Laborers International Union of North America. In particular, he was president and business manager of the Cement and Concrete Workers District Council. So it's a little bit of, I guess, confusing when it comes to how this stuff works. Even me, I had to just reread this stuff several times. But essentially, this Laborers International Union included thousands of laborers, all of them, all members within that organization who happened to work on some of the biggest construction projects there in New York City. Obviously, when you see something like New York, you realize there's tall buildings everywhere, uh, skyscrapers, so hardly anything that's short or small when it comes to those buildings so involving this organization it's already pretty powerful considering the amount of workers that they have tied to uh, those specific buildings in his case this guy Ralph Scopo because he was the president and business manager he that was I guess his official professional designation within it but really what he did was he used that position to extort money from all the cement con contractors those that were involved in building projects over two million dollars basically it was like this he would tell them that as long as they gave two percent of their project earnings so let's say uh, just out of the blue like ten million dollars was going to be earned from a contract given from I guess some organization in New York to the winners of that project they in turn had to give him two percent of that amount and then that way he can uh, place it back into the uh, mafia world in this case it was a quote-unquote concrete club made up of four New York Mafia families, one of them, of course, including his family, the Colombo crime family. So once again, how it worked was he ensured that everyone that was bidding on these very, very high dollar projects, those that were over $2 million, he would guarantee the winning bid to anyone as long as they in turn promised that they could give 2% of their earnings or whatever they won in terms of the contract back to him and he in turn would split it within those Cosa Nostra families. That's it. That's essentially what he did. It's, it's It was considered a form almost of extortion but in his case he promised them that they would win even if they had I guess one of the uh, higher contracting bids because normally in the world of winning bids it's the lower prices that win 
because that's the whole point of bidding. Uh, you go with the person or the entity that offers the lowest price while still providing good work. But in this case, he was ensuring that the person or entity that would win would be the ones that would at least promise the 2%. Others probably didn't, and that's why they never won. But the ones that did, he would get those 2% for his family. That goes to show how powerful things were with him. Because with one single project, he was suddenly earning for the families millions and millions and millions of dollars. Far more than, let's say, other standard mafia practices in terms of uh, holding people up, in terms of prostitution, uh, in terms of loan sharking. Uh, which earn money for the mafia, but nothing in terms of the high dollar amount like something like this. But it, it's pretty interesting to come across as, um, this information because, again, the mafia movies barely touch upon this type of stuff. They'll just simply showcase the way the mafia members earn fan, uh, money, but and never something along the lines of this high dollar amount. So much so that uh, eventually he was uh, found, I guess, in some kind of conversation involving how he was able to do this one of the ways he was doing this was uh, pretty much explaining in a recorded conversation someone wiretapped him and this was the evidence that was found he stated that with certain contractors those that aren't doing what they're supposed to do then they would essentially resort to violence much like in the world of any mafia uh, fa crime family members um, they would ask for this type of stuff and then if it's not done then they would go with option B which is essentially violence in case that wasn't enough of a motivator but if you can believe it eventually afterward this guy Ralph Scopo um, he was caught by, in this case, the infamous Mafia Commission trial. This was a huge organized operation by the FBI to try to target very key members of the five New York Mafia families. And because of this huge reach, he in turn was caught in it. And eventually in 1985, he, along with other leaders within the Mafia family, because again, by that point, even though he didn't have entitled like a pretty powerful name within the uh, Colombo family he still though had a pretty powerful position so his high-ranking position pretty much put him on the radar when it came to this FBI initiated operation so they indicted him they charged him with racketeering charges I think they even included that Rico charge in uh, some of the uh, after effects of this was the fact that he had to resign from his position of that uh, union world and then also all the leaders all the, I guess the regular leaders within it were also forced to resign everything was switched to a what's called a trust or a trustee an independent trustee so that way there's no hope and like hopefully the idea is there's no way of, of this new independent trustee doing anything along the lines that he was doing within it and he went to trial he pleaded not guilty of course to all the charges that were tied to him but eventually uh, and, it, and at one point, in fact, during the trial, the entire trial was interrupted because he was complaining of chest pains, and then that way he was transported to a local hospital. You will see that within the world of the mafia. Every time that a lot of the mafia leaders are being placed on trial, that's when they start doing that uh, show almost where it's them complaining of health complaining of other issues related to their body uh, essentially it's it's trying to make sure that they can get as much sympathy vote from the jury or from the judge when it comes to them being sentenced to prison the whole idea is that they won't be sentenced to prison instead some form of house arrest because of their quote unquote debilitating conditions you'll always see something like that happening it didn't work though because in some time in 19 86 this guy Ralph Scopo was convicted of all those charges and then he was sentenced it's a big ouchie too he was sentenced to a hundred years in prison so it sounds like all the evidence that the FBI was able to provide was more than enough to send little Ralphie to the maximum sentence a hundred years clearly of course this was a sentence where he was gonna die in jail and he ended up dying uh, sometime around 1993 while still incarcerated under a federal penitentiary he ended up dying there a little bit 
bit later to that same year, uh, October 22nd, 1993, one of his sons, Joseph Scopo, who was also involved within the Colombo family, was also uh, killed. In this case, he was murdered. So that goes to show that in his world, yet one of, yet again, one of his family members uh, was was killed because of being in that kind of criminal empire. But that's it. That's all the information associated really with this Ralph, little Ralphie Scopo. A brief little glimpse into the high, powerful world when it comes to uh, mafia-controlled concrete operations. Quite interesting when you think about it. Next time you, you're in New York City and you happen to be looking up at all those skyscrapers, it wouldn't be hard to imagine how many of them were built with the mafia's influence around them essentially uh, uh them being built and getting approved only because the mafia allowed certain contractors to get approved too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care